In this video, I'll be going over the most common mistakes I see players making and giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix them. By the end of this video, you'll be a much better player and on your way to ranking up. And the first common mistake I'll be going over is killing your drone. The only reason you should be droning the site and not saving your drone in spawn is if no one else on your team is droning the site. You need at least one person to drone the site to gather information to see which operators you want to run. Like if you drone the site and you see Mira, you can bring Ash or Twitch to counter her. Or if you see Bandit or Cade, you can run Thatcher. But most people just drive their drone into sight, red pinging anyone they see and end up getting their drone killed for no reason. If someone on your team is droning the site, watch their drone to figure out how you want to attack and then when the prep phase ends, just pick up your drone and spawn and you'll have double the information gatherers for the rest of the round. And once you've gathered information, you need to have a plan for your push. And that's why the next common mistake I'll be going over is not having a plan. Now this works for both defense and attack. Having a plan doesn't need to be super complex and you don't have to be the smartest player to think of a good plan for the round. So as an example, if I'm attacking kids slash dorms in Oregon, let's just say my plan is to drone out attic. If it's clear, then I repel in, go get rid of the wall denial if there is any by shooting it through the floor like this. And if there was a bandit here or whatever, you know, shoot it. Then come back into attic, hard breach the wall. You can shoot a cam in the deep attic if you see it's clear or you need to clear something with your gun six, like in a zombie barrier, shoot that off. And then you, you know, you go through the round as if you were entering site. I'm not saying this is the most default take or the best take, but at least I thought out a plan for the round. If you do this, you'll be much more confident during the round and save much more time. Whereas if you just chose a random op, you like and push from somewhere random, it's going to be much harder to clear whoever is contesting you when you don't know your goal for the round. The same thing goes for defense. If you have a plan, especially if you decide to branch outside of sight and contest more map control, then it's much easier to hold down your area with your operator and overall goal in mind. So even if you don't think it's the best plan, go for it and be confident. And that's why I think you should watch better players and try out their strats so you can be much more prepared next time you play a certain site. Now the next mistake I'm going over is one of the main reasons a lot of players have bad aim and it's going to be bad crosshair placement. This is one of the most important aspects to having good aim and a lot of people don't pay attention to it enough. And I'll be going over some situations where even a lot of experienced players make crosshair placement mistakes. Now to start off, your crosshair placement should almost always be at head level. This is because Siege is a one-shot headshot game, so if you aim at head level, it leads to a lot of easy kills. But most people end up messing up their crosshair placement when they go crouched or when they go proned. Now there are certain situations where standing up is the right move, crouching is the right move, or going proned is the right move. Because when someone comes around this corner, they're gonna have their crosshair head level. So if they see you crouched or prone, they have to flick down to kill you, which is most of the time they're not going to be able to do that. So in theory, holding an angle like this is good, but most people end up lowering their crosshairs when they're holding angles like this. So whenever you're holding an angle, especially when you're crouched or prone, make sure your crosshair stays head level. And if you want a super easy way to have your crosshair always head level, go up to a barricade and look for the second buckle right here on the barricade. Find that second buckle and keep your crosshair placement that same spot and go around the map and it'll become second nature eventually. As you can see, when I keep my crosshair in that exact same spot, it's always going to be head level and you can just switch it to different angles like this. And it's always going to be head level because you put it on that second buckle. So now that you've fixed your mistakes and crosshair placement, to improve your aim, you need to put it to use. That's why the next mistake is not swinging. Now there are situations where you shouldn't swing and where you should play passive, but I wanna talk about the situations where you should swing because they are generally harder to recognize. The situations I see people dying the most because they're not swinging is when they're allowing the enemy to swing them. Now if I'm in this corner and the enemy knows where I am, either by droning me or they just cleared all the other angles in the room, if I continue to sit in this corner, I'm dead. The reason for this is because of peeker's advantage. If someone knows I'm in that corner, if they swing me, they're gonna kill me because of peeker's advantage. And what peeker's advantage is, is if someone is swinging around a corner and they're peeking someone that's standing still, the person that's peeking is going to see the person standing still first. So when the person peeking knows exactly where the other person is, it makes it a super easy kill for them. So if someone cleared all the other angles in the room and they know you have to be in this corner, then to get rid of that advantage, you have to swing. Instead of the person swinging you having peeker's advantage, you'll both be on an even playing field and then it's just up to if you have better aim. So next time someone knows exactly where you are, instead of staying in that position and letting them have the advantage, take the fight. And the next common mistake I see getting a lot of people killed is clearing angles wrong and not holding good angles. When you swing, you shouldn't be swinging out with your whole body exposed, you should be clearing and isolating each angle. A lot of people will rush this step and end up exposing themselves to six different angles when the person that they're peeking only has to worry about one. And that's why quick peeking is one of the best skills to learn and one of the best ways to safely gather information. And so instead of dying without even really being able to fight back, 
quick peek each angle and clear each angle one by one. And the same thing goes for when you're holding angles. You want to hold safe and not predictable angles. The way that you do this is down to your sight setup and perspective. If I'm holding this angle onto yellow, the first angle that the person on yellow is going to clear is the angle that I'm on. As you can see, they're gonna check this and then they're gonna check that. So instead of holding this angle, I could go back here and hold this angle. So unless the person on yellow has a drone on me, they're not gonna know I'm on that angle. So when they clear this angle, they clear this angle, they're gonna walk down the staircase, expose themselves, and not be ready to, you know, kill the person that's holding the angle onto them. So when I'm back here, I'm much more safe and unpredictable, so I can just take a few shots and then, you know, change my position. So always be thinking in the mind of your enemy when holding angles so you can use your sight setup to your advantage. And if you want to have the biggest advantage in Siege, you need to stop throwing rounds. Now, what I mean by throwing rounds is if you have the man advantage, you should be playing more passive and looking to set up crossfires or refrags. So if you're in a 2v1, instead of holding an angle outside of sight, rotate back to sight and set up a crossfire. Let's say your teammate is holding a passive angle in attic and you're holding a more aggressive angle right here. When the attacker goes to clear his angles, he's obviously not going to see your teammate and then he clears through, clears through, he's eventually going to see you. Either you kill him or he tries to swing out and kill you. Now all your teammate has to do is swing out when he hears shooting and it's a free kill. Now even if he does end up killing you, he's not going to be able to just flick over your teammate unless your teammate is horrible and he's also bolo. So it's much better than if you continue to hold this angle because if you die then it's just another 1v1 for your teammate whereas if you rotate back it's actually a 2v1 instead of two 1v1s. Now keep in mind you can also do this on attack if you have sight control or you have the diffuser down because it's going to end up being the same thing. If you feel that you improved from this video and you also enjoyed the video, click the video popping up on your screen to watch more of my content.